you so much. Not bad at all, if I do say so myself. I see needles and thread. What has you engaging in the textile arts, Leone? Patching up a hole in my equipment bag. Take a look. What do you think? If your objective is merely to block up the hole, then I believe you've performed quite adequate work. Blocking the hole was all I cared about, so this suits me just fine. Yes, but your bag is less bag and more a collection of dirty, smelly patches. Smelly, huh? <laughs> I don't smell anything. That aside, don't you have an allowance from your house to make purchases? No, nothing. Worse than that, actually. I'm in debt. I could only afford the Officer's Academy because everyone in my village donated. It's not just that. In the Alliance, you have to pay the nobles as well in order to secure recommendations. Commoners can only get an education by borrowing money. It's pretty stupid. Not sure what makes the nobles think they've got the right to... Oh, sorry, Linhart. Forgot you're a noble. If one is in a family that bears a crest, then you're going to stand atop the social pecking order. I'd raise the topic with the goddess. She handed out crests to the nobles, after all. Just handed them out, huh? You make it sound pretty casual. By the way, I have a weapon to recommend. It should suit a commoner such as yourself. That so? I just told you I don't have a lot of money. You're not going to buy it from a merchant. If you find it, you can keep it for free. Now you've got my attention. There's a legend I read recently about Saint Indec, one of the four saints of the Church of Saros. <laughs> Uh-huh. Keep talking. Sorry. Suddenly very sleepy. Nap time calls. Hey, come on! Wake up! You can't just doze off in the middle of a story! Long story short, there's a holy weapon hidden in Lake Tutates that you can use even without a crest. <sighs> Lake Tutates? Right. Let's go, Professor. What's with that look? Don't you want to help your lovely students? Yeah, me and Linhart. Aren't we just the cutest? Leave me be. I'm off to nap. We'll never find it unless you're there. If you're really that tired, we'll just have to carry you. We'll bring more people. We'll take turns. Come on, Professor. You're coming, right? If we're going now, I do suggest leaving Edelgard and Hubert innocent of our quest. Lake Tutates is a place that concerns the saints of the Church of Saros. It may become bothersome should the two of them find out. <sighs> I'm not fond of keeping secrets from friends, but I guess we can tell them when we get back. All right, let's go find this thing! Thank you so much! Thanks so much! I have gratitude. Thank you. I am grateful.
sweetheart, wake up! We've reached Lake Tutates! Huh? What? Oh, um, yes. So we have. A temple on a lake, huh? Looks fancy. And that's a cute... Uh... Guard dog? Guard dog? Is it I to whom you are referring? Whoa! A magic beast! And it talks! Nuisance! You weaklings should turn tail and run! Uh, hi! We're actually, um, looking for something? I know well what it is that you desire. If you want it, you must first complete my trial. Of course we do. This is as awful as I expected it would be. Perhaps we could go home now? Are you kidding? It's just a little fog. Come on, let's go talk to Mr. Magic Beast. Ready for anything. Apologies. What's my strategy? What's the plan? My orders? I do this for all of us. Huh? Pretty good, huh? Only the strong survive. I suspect our opponent is an illusion. If we cut off the source of this magic, they should stop attacking. I will prevail. To survive, I will win! My heart burns with pride. Fun to watch. What's my strategy? Put me in there. I'll cut through. I'm awake. Let's make this quick. You're in my way! Ha! It's done. You're making me look bad. More fighting. Thank you. Ready for anything. Jeez. You haven't earned my pity. Burn until we meet again. I sense an improvement. You knew the odds.
with that. for our future. Cut through. What's my strategy? My orders? More fighting. Put me in there. for anything. I will see this war through. I do this for all of us. I'm gonna do it! Ernie's unstoppable! 
unstoppable. That was fun to watch. Let's make this quick. Hope you're ready. Might makes right. Try harder. Yeah. I will prevail. This is my stage now. That's a win for everyone.
sense an improvement. Just be careful. Must continue my training.
Perseverance is the key. What's the plan? Whatever it takes. You did well. The trial ends here. What sublime children of men. Go ahead. Name your desire. So, uh, we heard you're giving away free weapons? Do be quiet, Leone. Somewhere in this temple is said to rest the Holy Bow of Saint Indec. It is called the Inexhaustible. Could you find it in your heart to let my friend here have it? You have shown my deserving of my sacred bow. I will grant your wish. Yes! Thanks, Mr. Magic Beast! Aren't you happy, Leone? That's quite a bow, and it was completely free. I'll say. I've never seen anything like it. But is it really okay for me to take this? I would say so, wouldn't you? After all, you went through an awful lot to get it. I know, but... Professor, maybe you should hold on to it for me. At least for a while. It's not a weapon just anyone can use. I can see that. I want to be more confident in my strength before I really call it my own. Even holding it right now makes me feel unworthy. I'd really appreciate you looking after it for me. Thanks, Professor. And everyone else who helped, too. I'm really grateful. Linhart, I'm sorry I forced you to come along. But seeing such a kind-hearted person like you, well... Let's just say my opinion of the nobility's shifted a bit. I'm not sure I completely understand, Leone, but it sounds like praise, so I will take it as such. Now, let's get back to work. I need all the training I can get. She already possesses the strength to use that bow. She went through the trouble of fighting a saint so she could claim that weapon as her own. Or maybe you'd call it a saintly beast. In any case, when the time is right, can you fill in Edelgard about what happened? Oh, and please do let me use that bow. It's not exactly a hero's relic, but it is still rather fascinating, isn't it? I would love to learn to what extent the bow's connection to the crest influences the weapon, and perhaps even... <sighs> oh, it's been too much of a day, hasn't it? I'm feeling tired, so let's talk about this later. Good night. Your guidance was greatly useful. I have much expertise now. You have my... I thought this was a test. All right. 
That was used. What? Sustains me. Of course, I. This. This will. Be We've finished without issue. Now, to put this skill to use. I'm starting to get it. Seems my practice has paid off. Looks like I've gained some new power. I suppose I wasn't ready. to hard work.
I must continue to work hard. Was there any doubt? All that hard work's paid off. What a waste of time. Dorothea, I am surprised to find you here. I did not think you were all that religious. There's a lot you don't know, Ferdy. But you're right. I'd hardly call myself devout. After all, it was thanks to the goddess and her noble regime that I suffered so much as a child. You must be quite brave to speak so coarsely in this hallowed place. But what do you mean about suffering as a child? <sighs> do I really have to tell you? Oh, forget it. I'm sure you already know that I'm an orphan. I grew up in the alleys of Enbar, begging for coins, eating scraps, drinking from drains. I see. I remember seeing street children around the city. <laughs> I could have died. Then the right person overheard me singing. And suddenly I was in the opera. I was a songstress. And my goodness, did the nobles like me. The people who used to spit on me and call me an urchin, they praised my voice and my beauty. A nobleman who once kicked me gave me the most gorgeous shoes. I almost asked if it was a joke. So that is why you despise the nobility. But why do you think I am the same as them? Do you really believe that is the kind of man I am? You think I would ever treat people differently based on appearances? There is nothing noble about that. Oh, really? You're something different? That's not how I remember things. It was the very day that I was discovered. I was in high spirits. Nothing was wrong in the world. I secretly bathed in one of the town's fountains, hoping to wash off some of the dirt from the streets. I sang the same song the opera composer overheard earlier that day. And that's when you appeared. Me? No, it could not have been. Don't play dumb. 
You glared at me, the same look I'd gotten from every other noble. Then you ran off. When we met at the Academy, you were a different person. All smiles and friendly words. You were like a bee, Ferdinand. A bee attracted to a flower in full bloom. So it was you then, singing that song. Dorothea, please listen. This is a misunderstanding. When I saw you, I could not take my eyes off you. I was hypnotized. Your beautiful voice, your elegant face, droplets of water on your skin that glittered in the sun. I thought you were a water nymph. Stop it, don't lie to me. No, it is true. I was only a child. The vision overwhelmed me. That is why I ran. I plucked up the courage to return, but no one was there. I thought perhaps it was a dream. Maybe I can believe you. I've wanted to ever since the day you made me those treats. I thought then that maybe you weren't like the others, but... There's a lot I have to let go of, Ferdy. Of course. I am glad we had this conversation. You know, I do not mind you thinking of me as a bee. Life as a simple drone, circling a queen. It actually sounds quite wonderful. <laughs> Don't drones keep the queen safe from other bugs? I like the sound of that. <laughs> I was under the impression you were going to break all of your paintbrushes. Cut it out, Lindhart! I'm just glad you're back to painting. I felt terrible about what happened last time, you know. I guess I should have kept my opinions about your painting to myself. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe you should have. So what do you suppose is the name for this kind of situation? Um, what situation? Am I in your way again? I must be. Okay, let me pack my things and I'll be off. Ugh, no, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about when two people are together, but not together. When they're basically by themselves. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. I'm always alone. Oh. Alone? Well, there it is then. I suppose you could say we're alone together. We're each here alone, yet together. So we're alone together. What do you think? Alone together? Oh, wait, I get it. That's just a nice way of saying you want to be alone, right? Alone alone. If that's what you mean, I'll go. Please, Bernadetta, you shouldn't go. Being alone together means accomplishing more. We each have the concentration one gets from time alone, but also the thrill of being with someone else. I find it to be an exhilarating environment. Have you felt that as well? Huh? Me? Um, I'd rather be alone, but... When I'm painting, and I know you can see, I worry about what you might point out about it. Is that the thrill you mean? Because I feel that. Here's what I wish to point out about your painting. You've really improved. Your lines are bolder, your color choice is more informed, and your composition as a whole... Did you actually just praise me, Linhart? What's next, a rain of flying pigs? I was just saying what I think. Look, you probably have talent, and you work hard too. Oh no, I'm on to you now. You're scheming, but you won't get anywhere by flattering me. Try all you want to get your hooks into my heart, you won't fool me! I'm not sure how praising you means I'm trying to get my hooks into your heart. I have a heart of stone! No one will ever get to it! What a shame. I suppose I'll stop praising you then. You, you will? No, I, I didn't mean it that way. You can, um, you can praise me as much as you want! I don't understand you one whit. However, if you want praise, then praise you will get. You're cute. <laughs> Don't say stuff like that!
Linhart, please accept my apology. You are not deserving of this punishment. I am the one who suggested it would be Great Firewood. I suppose it's only fair I get punished too. No one ever bothered to inform me that pile of trash was the property of the Imperial Army. My apologies, Petra. My idea turned out to be worthless. It was not worthless. It had great worth. You gave me great help so I could be smoking all of that meat. I give you all of my gratitude for that. Well, at least you'll have no worries about provisions. I just realized they didn't actually tell us when the punishment will be over. You can be leaving if you are wanting to. I will not be telling anyone. This is my responsibility to take. How are you so obedient and yet so passionate at the... Oh, look, Petra! The book you were searching for! The Complete Guide to Fodlin's Wildlife! I have so much happiness! You are full of amazement. <laughs> well, books are my field of expertise. Still, what a stroke of luck. Linhart, can I be asking you something? What's that? You are no longer saying I am bothering you. Instead, you are helping me with my requests. What is the reasoning? Why am I not bothering you now? Hmm, interesting observation. I wonder why that is. You always ask me so earnestly. You seem to throw your entire being into all that you do. I guess I rather like it, working as hard as you do. On occasion, that is. You are liking the hard work? Yes. You inspire me to be... Well, something that is not normally me. If you are liking it, then I will keep working hard. With your wisdom, I can be working even harder than before. That means I will be needing your wisdom from now onward. With my strength and your wisdom, there is nothing we can't be doing. I think you may be right. Your strength and my wisdom? That sounds like a wonderful combination. You. Ah! What did I do? Am I in your way? I'm in your way. I know, I get it. I'm sorry. I, I can't stand the sight of me either. I never said that. Stay right there. You're always running away. You must really find me irritating. Irritating? I know. I completely... What? N no, I mean, I know I'm irritating, but... Huh? Stop. Do you remember when you came up behind me and knocked the sword from my hands? I need you to teach me that technique. Sword? Teach? Technique? That's, um... That's a joke, right? Because that's... That's just about the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard! Maybe so, but I saw you do it. You don't remember? You moved like a flash, and before I knew it... Nope! Wasn't Bernie! You must have dreamed it. Unless my accuser dares to produce some evidence. Yes, evidence. I still have your satchel, see? Oh, my satchel. Wait, that? No, that's, um... That's not mine. You can't prove it's mine. You know it's yours. I'm innocent, I swear. Merciful Zero, save me! This is getting nowhere. But, hmm... Maybe I should corner her like last time. Then she'll use the technique without thinking. <laughs> Never mind. I'm done here. Lies! All lies! I didn't do any... Uh-huh. Well, where'd he go? Are you researching something? Yes. I am investigating useful fighting techniques. You're always trying to become a better fighter. Personally, I'm sick of all the battles. You are... feeling sick about battle? 
Oh, I understand. Yes, I am also wishing for this war to finish quickly. Sooner the better. Uh, I don't even remember the last time I washed my hair. Yes, it is hard to be braiding your hair when it is damaged from lack of care. Speaking of, you know, I don't think I've seen many braids like yours, Petra. I assume it's a hairstyle from Bridget? May I take a closer look? You may. This style of braiding has been passing... Uh, has been passed down through my family. How very elaborate. That must take a long time to do. Your words are delighting me. Braiding it does take up a great amount of time every day. Every day? No, I suppose you couldn't sleep with your hair like that, could you? When there's time, do you think you could teach me? It would be fun to match you every now and then. And once I learn how, I can help you with your hair. What do you think? I am really liking that idea. It would give me great happiness to have our hair match. <laughs> I'd like it too. Dorothea, before I had confusion, I thought you were being overly familiar. But then I gained understanding. Now I am knowing that is how you show your kindness. And I have much gratitude for that. It is impossible to be imagining life without you. You are... precious to me. Petra, what a lovely thing to say. I might just cry. If you will be crying, you can have my... Uh, ah, my shoulder. For your crying. Oh, I was just playing around. But if I ever do need a good cry, I do hope you'll lend me your shoulder. My shoulder will always be available for you. Oh, yeah? So I don't even need to make a reservation or anything? A reservation? For my shoulder? Oh, I just meant... <laughs> you know what? It doesn't matter. What matters is that I enjoy spending time with you. It makes me stop worrying about marriage and status. If that is the truth, then will you be coming to Bridget with me? Huh? When this war is finished, I am wishing for you to be seeing my homeland. You... you are? Oh my. I'd love to, Petra. As soon as the fighting is done, I'd like nothing more than to see Bridget with you. You're following me. Stop. I am leaving you alone, just as you asked. I may be walking the same way as you, but... What do you want? You've made it abundantly clear I'm not to want anything from you, including politeness. I heard a rumor that you're planning to settle down with a noble. I abandoned my family, so you'll have to look elsewhere. Not much to gain from marrying me. I just find you interesting is all. Is that so odd? Interesting? I'm not interesting. What do you mean? I've never met a noble so... unsociable. Yes, that's the word, unsociable. Other nobles are quick to be friends, even if it's just because they might gain something from it. The Empire's nobility, maybe. The Kingdom's nobility is a whole different animal. If they are, so what? You should care how others think of you. Why? I don't answer to them. All that matters is improving my skill. I'll prove my worth on the battlefield. Those people care so much about appearances they can't even see each other. It makes me sick. Oh, I agree. What's important isn't how someone looks, it's their true nature. I don't pretend to know your true nature. I don't even have a very good understanding of my own. But I suppose you see mine just fine, don't you? Just a silly girl with no thoughts in her head except for marrying a noble. Yes? <laughs> Goodbye, Felix. Hmm. Why am I so unlucky with women lately? Oh, Sylvain, what's that face for? Have you been dumped again? <laughs> Isn't there an unwritten rule you shouldn't ask someone that? 
I'm sorry. I thought you didn't mind being dumped. <laughs> so your love life can get you down sometimes after all. Who knew? I'm sad every time I break up with someone. It's just... I usually try to be the one doing the breaking up. I've never had a hard time with girls. Ever. Not until recently. But now when I think about it, I wonder what any of them even liked about me. It's not as if any of them knew much about me. I don't get it. Isn't that what a relationship is for? Learning about someone else? You can't know it all right at the start. I asked you before if you would have invited me out if I was a peasant. You did ask me that, yes. That was wrong of me to say. I've just... It's not an excuse, but I'm always so suspicious. I'm a nobleman with a crest. The marriage proposals don't stop coming. Everybody wants me. Except, they don't actually want me at all. They want my bloodline. Within my family and without. It's always the same story. Sometimes I think that if I didn't have a crest, no one would look at me twice. I see. And you're probably not wrong. Honestly, I've had those same sort of thoughts myself. Oh? What sort of thoughts might those be? I sang, people cheered and applauded, and when I walked off stage, I'd find the same thing every night. A mountain of presents and marriage proposals. But none of those people knew me. All they knew was the singer they saw on the stage. All they wanted was my looks and my voice. None of them even tried to get to know the real me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've heard this somewhere. We may come from different places, but we're much the same, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I suppose we are. Look, Dorothea, I've realized something. Even if you were an old grandma, I'd still flirt with you. And I'd absolutely win you over. Though, I'd much rather win you over now and be with you until you become an old grandma. That might be the most legitimately romantic thing you've ever said, Sylvain. And I can't say I disagree. I'd rather you win me over now, too, so that I can stay by your side until you're an old grandpa. Well, before any of that, will you go to dinner with me? I'd be happy to. Felix. I suppose your thoughts are still with Lord Lenato. I'm fine. I'm just frustrated by how little I was able to do. I know he was trying to protect me, but Lenato never really told me anything. In the end, I don't think I understood his feelings at all. You said it yourself. Be more moderate in your passions. To me, he always seemed like a knight out of a story. And I was so caught up in my ideals, I turned a blind eye to his sadness, his hatred, even when they were right in front of me. I guess I'm pretty far from real knighthood, huh? Perhaps. Yet knowing someone well does not mean you know how they feel, whether family or friend. To know someone's sorrow and turn blindly from it, that is the act of a fool. But pursuing your ideals is not foolish. But before, you said... I said to be moderate in your passions, not to abandon your ideals. It's okay to be who you are. Thank you. Hearing you say that means a lot. Ah, I almost forgot. You lent me this. Oh, the book I lent you. I'm guessing you hated it? Actually, I already knew the story. My brother used to read it to me all the time. Must have dug up some old feelings, then. I suppose. That's just what I'd expect the knight in the story to say. It's not just the way you talk, either. It's who you are as a person, deep down. <laughs> well, I think you're like the squire in the book. He's only half a knight, but he's bold and gregarious. And he always does his best. Don't stop being that half-knight, okay? You got it. 
I'll become the kind of knight only I can be. Excuse me, Ash. Do you have a moment? I finally managed to finish cooking a dish, and I would love for you to have a taste. Sounds good. I'd be happy to. Wow, Mercedes. This is delicious. I used that herb you suggested. Boiling it gave off such a lovely aroma. I think I used the right amount of spice, too. Even I could eat it without burning my tongue. I'm a much better cook now, thanks to you. I hope you can continue teaching me. Oh, definitely. I should thank you, too. Thank me? Even after all the trouble I've caused you? Seeing you persevere has made me really happy. In fact, you've reminded me of someone I cared about a lot. Oh, someone you cared about? Romantically? This is all so sudden, Ash. I, I don't... Uh, I, I didn't mean it that way. I was actually thinking about my brother. <sighs> what a relief. I didn't even know you had a brother. He was the son of Lenato, my adoptive father. I always called him my brother, though. Failure never got to him. All he'd ever do is laugh and try again. Whenever I was feeling down about a setback, he would cheer me up. He'd say something like, Don't worry, we'll tackle it together next time. I was always happy to have him around. He sounds like a wonderful person. He was. And I get the same feeling from you. I've done nothing but bother you with frivolous little things. I'm sure I could never be like your brother. But I'd like to stay by your side, if you'll have me. What do you mean? I want to be there to help you in times of need, or to cheer you up when you're feeling down. I should be able to manage that without doing too much damage. I'm glad to hear you say that. Thank you, Mercedes. I know I can rely on you. Annie? Do you have a moment? Is this about what happened when we were shopping? If so, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Not so fast. I haven't properly apologized yet. So, I'm sorry. I just... I got scared. Imagine if something bad happened to you because of me. Mercy. You would have just run away if you were on your own, wouldn't you? Instead, you acted defensively because I was there. I dragged you down. Mercy, you're upsetting me! How dare you say that you dragged me down! You know why I was acting so recklessly? Because I wanted to protect my best friend in the whole world! Annie... Do you remember when we first enrolled at the Academy? It seemed like everyone was leagues ahead of us and so far out of reach. I felt completely hopeless. But because you were there, I didn't lose hope. So... Don't say stupid things about how you drag me down, or how you don't deserve things. Thank you for saying that. And again, I'm sorry. You're just so important to me. I know I could never find another friend like you. You stayed by my side through thick and thin. I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if anything happened to you because of me. Mercy, can we be friends again? Of course, Annie. Friends forever. <laughs> Good. I don't know what I would have done if we hadn't found a way to make up. I'm sorry. I should have said something sooner. No, I'm the one who should have stopped being so stubborn and said something. <laughs> you know, now that everything's as it should be, I'm suddenly starving. <laughs> That's just like you. Come, let's go for tea. Ooh, let's! <laughs> And we should have some mercy baked sweets on the side. I think I love you more than just about anything in the world. You do? Oh, Annie, you're too sweet. Not as sweet as your baking. I love your baking more than anything in the world, too. Other than you. 
Well, I'm always happy to bake for you, Annie. <sighs> I'm so happy to have you bake... Uh, back? <laughs> Apologies for my late arrival, Mercedes. My duties ran long, as per usual. There's no need to apologize at all. Please, have a seat. We've met for tea so many times, but you never seem to get used to it, do you, Ingrid? Not entirely, no. I'm not accustomed to being treated so... delicately. Anyway, what will we talk about today? I actually wanted to gripe about something that's been bothering me. You? Gripe? Now that's unusual. I'm happy to listen, of course. It's the least I can do after all the kindness you've shown me. Thank you. The one thing I really wanted to talk about is marriage. Oh? Yes. I received a letter from my adoptive father about marriage discussions with a noble family. And will you accept? That's the problem. No matter what I decide, I'll probably be married off anyway. What I really want to do is help those in need. But I think it would be more difficult to do so if I married a nobleman. Understandably so. Sounds to me like you need a strategy to silence your father. Sorry? To... silence him? Don't you agree? It seems the best course of action would be to consider severing all ties with the family and running away. <laughs> we don't need to go that far. I'm sorry, I really just needed to let that out. I don't need you to worry about solving my problems. Oh, okay. It's just a bit personal for me, actually. My own father has brought countless marriage proposals to my attention. He always was obsessed with me carrying on the family bloodline. At a very young age, my hand had already been promised to someone in marriage. But Glenn died young. That must have been difficult for you. Would you have married him if he had survived? Hmm. That's a good question. It's hard to imagine now. Although I did admire him quite a lot, he held true to the ideals of knighthood, proudly serving the king. Even after all these years, I aspire to be the type of knight that he embodied. I see. A very noble cause indeed. <laughs> How strange that we should be worrying about the same thing. Even though we are such different people. It's true. Enjoying a nice chat over tea with you like this makes me realize maybe the paths we walk aren't so different after all. Don't you think? I do. These tea parties of ours, they really are something special. That they are. Ingrid, I would love to get to know you better if that's okay. I want to know about your childhood, your favorite books, the sweets you like, anything at all. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm happy to speak with you anytime. And I want to know you better too, Mercedes. <laughs> Mercedes, I have to insist that you take up a position behind me on the battlefield. I must protect the common folk, and you have been in danger rather frequently of late. I appreciate your concern, but I can take care of myself. Everything is about nobility and common folk with you, Lawrence. It's tiresome. Tiresome? I am only fulfilling my duty. Is that to say you would have left me lying on the floor in pain, had it not been your duty to assist? You mean when you were hurt on my account? I still would have assisted you, as any commoner would have. It is simply a matter of perspective. And if I were common-born, I would not have simply let you leave without... Never mind. Forgive me. Excuse me? Are you implying that you would have taken advantage of me if you were lowborn? What? No! And I am no longer interested in the hypothetical nature of this conversation. Oh, Lawrence, you'll never change. What do you mean? I find myself growing irritated just looking at you. Is that so? I fail to see exactly how I am so irritating. 
You claim that you don't want to be involved with common women, don't you? But I know deep in your heart you love being around us. You're willfully ignorant to that. I hope you know what you're depriving yourself of. I am certain I've told you before that my marriage must be beneficial to House Gloucester. I've not the time for fruitless courtship. Fruitless? Oh, how can you say such things? What would happen if you fell in love with a commoner? Nothing at all. I accept the role that I must play, and any sacrifice that must accompany it. So, your duty as a noble is more important than your own feelings? Naturally. If that's true, then your whole existence is rather sad. I am afraid you misunderstand. This is my choice. There is no cause for pity. I think I've heard enough. I have to go. I shouldn't sigh in such a holy place. There's nothing wrong with it. I sigh here all the time. The goddess receives all our prayers and our sighs. What's bothering you? I'd be happy to talk about it if you'd like. Oh, it's nothing. Not worth talking about. Is that so? Am I not worth talking to? That's not what I meant. <sighs> Sorry to offend you. I'll tell you about it. I'm just uncertain about my future. My father wants me to be a knight. I don't think I can handle it. Can you imagine a knight as pathetic as me? I don't find you pathetic at all. Is there something you would rather pursue? Well, I've always loved painting. You want to become an artist? How wonderful! What's your ambition? Me? I simply want to help people with their troubles. Those who can't help themselves. I haven't spent much time considering how I'd go about that, though. Oh, I'm sorry. We were supposed to be discussing your troubles. Not at all. I'm actually feeling a little better. Knowing that you aren't sure about your future, I don't feel quite so... alone. Everyone in this world feels a little lost, you know. I really do believe that the life of an artist is a wonderful dream to pursue. There was a beautiful painting of the goddess in the church where I used to live. Whenever times were difficult, I would stare up at her and sigh. Thinking about that painting helps me even now. I've always wanted to paint the goddess. You should. I'm sure your painting will help someone else in their time of need. I can't paint anything powerful enough to do that. I wish I could. Maybe one day. I'll give that some thought. Thank you, Mercedes. Thank you for volunteering to clean this room, Miss Annette. Most appreciated. Don't worry about it. It's the least I can do to repay you for all you've taught me. It seems like a small payment, honestly. I wish I could do more. In that case, I have nothing to worry about. Do make sure you get the bookshelf as well. Be thorough. The bookshelf? <laughs> but it's not even dusty. Dirt always lurks in the places you can't see. Best of luck on your hunt. Oh, okay. Leave it to me. Oh, there are a lot of rare books here. Miss Annette, please stop jumping on the stool. You'll tumble down and crack your skull. Huh? Whoa! Miss Annette, are you all right? Can you stand? Yes, I'm fine. Sorry. What a blessing. Neither the books nor yourself came to any harm. Here. I'll help you clear them up. Oh, my. The inside of this bookshelf is quite filthy. So dirt was lurking in the places we couldn't see, just like you said. And we found it thanks to all the books falling. 
every cloud has a dusty lining. <laughs> this dirt is really bothersome. Agreed. Shall we endeavor to get rid of it together? You can count on me. Steady. Don't go leaping about in your enthusiasm. What is it, Marianne? I'm curious why you've been eating your meals near me as of late. I'm not much for conversation. I'm always at a loss for words, and I never know how to respond to questions. Well, it's true that there are some who prefer a lively dinner table, but I prefer to eat in peace. With you, my meals are a relaxing experience. In fact, you're the most peaceful dining companion I've ever had. R really there is a real grace and fluidity to your every movement. I greatly appreciate refined table manners. Observing you all this time, I believe I've realized what is so striking about you. Your beauty comes from the heart. It is an inner beauty. It is not some flamboyant pageantry, a product of external adornment or grooming. When I first noticed it, I thought that it could use some refinement, a little polish, but I was mistaken. You are perfect in your natural state, just as you are. You think I'm beautiful? Just the way I am? Certainly. To add a superficial luster on top of what you already possess would be offensively redundant. No one's ever said anything like that to me before. Alas, I am the only one with eyes. But perhaps it is for the best that your beauty not be revealed to all the world. Yes. It is certainly better that only I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, can appreciate your true magnificence. And on that note, I bid you farewell. What a strange person. But being called beautiful just the way I am, that was nice to hear. Raphael, what's he doing at that desk? Hey, are you studying? I thought you'd given up on it. Nice to see you. <laughs> what the? Oh, Leone! <laughs> what's wrong? Why are you crying? I, I just got a thank you letter from my little sister. Okay, maybe start from the beginning. My little sister lives with my grandpa now. She's had to deal with so much since I decided not to take over the family business. You might have to back up a bit more before this starts to make sense to me. Our parents were merchants, but they died in an accident. We had some money saved at first, but... But grandpa isn't healthy enough to work, and I'm not smart enough to work a job that requires much thinking. That's really tough. Hard to make a fortune with just your strength, I'm sure. I had to sell all our valuables just to pay my way here so I could become a knight. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. My sister wants the best for me, but... She's the smart one in the family. She's the one that should be here. When I ask if she needs anything, she always says she's fine. She doesn't want to ask me for anything, because she knows I'm having such a hard time here. She sounds like a great kid. So, what did the letter say? It says she's happy and thankful for all the study materials I sent her. That's good, right? Wait, where did you find extras? I couldn't find any, so I just sent her mine. It's like you said, right? It's better to give them to someone who will use them instead of letting them go to waste. Um, don't take this the wrong way, but don't you think you've still got things to learn? Well, I guess if it makes her happy, it's worth it. Maybe I can scrounge something up for her, too. <laughs> Who's 
there. Oh, hey, Ignatz. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Relax. You're not interrupting. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were training out here. I sometimes come here to practice by myself. It's more like a real battlefield, you know? Shooting the targets in the yard lets you train your aim and all, but the tension just isn't the same. You're right. A real battlefield feels quite different. But if that's the atmosphere you want, I, I feel even more like I'm intruding. Oh, knock it off. You're already here. May as well stick around while I catch my breath. Ah, okay, sorry. Thank you. Sorry to bother you. You know you've said you're sorry about a dozen times since you got here. Oh, I'm so... Ah. <laughs> it's fine. I guess it's part of your charm. Hey, what's that bundle of papers? Oh, did you come here to paint? I remember now. Someone said you're a great artist. You paint a lot, right? Uh, yes. Yes. When I have the time, that is. I enjoy painting. It helps me relax. Oh, well, that could be your thing. My thing? Huh? What do you mean? Last time we talked about it, you said you didn't have a thing you were really amazing at. But if you like painting so much, it must be a skill you're looking to master. M my paintings are nothing but a hobby. Besides, I'm not that good. I never took art lessons. When... when I was little, I drew a picture for a young girl. The picture made her so happy that I decided to keep at it. That's how it started. So you're practicing your art to make other people happy? Is that it? Oh no, th that's an overstatement. I must insist again, it's just a hobby. Even if I were to become a master artist, it wouldn't be a useful skill. Aren't you from a merchant family employed by the nobles? I think it would be really useful there. I'm not inheriting the business. My brother is. My father said that I'm to become a knight. So my art won't do anyone any good. At all. Ever. Oh, Ignatz. Um, excuse me, Shamir? What is it? Do you need something? Yes. I was curious about the world beyond Fodlan. Oh. You came from somewhere outside Fodlan, right? I'm curious about your homeland, what kind of place it was, and I thought you might... I will not. Sorry? There's no point in me telling you about it. I... uh... I, I see. All right, then. Wait. You misunderstand. Hearing me tell stories about the things I've seen? What good is that? That's just my experience. If you want to know about the world, you need to experience it for yourself. Is what I meant to say. Oh, that's what it was. That's... good. How so? I thought... maybe you didn't like me. Is that what you think? In your experience, do I seem to dislike you? If you can't determine something as simple as that, then you would gain nothing from the outside world. Oh, um... I don't actually know. I'm not very good at reading people, I guess. Ask me. I'm right here. I, 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 I'm not that brave. I'm sorry, I'll leave you alone. I'll be going now. Not brave enough to ask a simple question. Or does he just not care? <laughs> duty was mine today. What are you doing here? Oh, I... Uh... I'm sorry. You've been avoiding me ever since I lost my temper, haven't you? You're probably scared of me now. In the moment, I was hurt. I'm sure you had good reasons to act the way you did. If you want me to leave you alone, I will. I promise, you've got nothing to fear from me. Leonie, I... 
I've watered all the plants, so I'm done here. I'll get out of your way. Uh, wait! Huh? Hey, what is it? It's... Um... I don't mean to bother you. I'm sorry for keeping you here. <laughs> no, not at all. Thanks for keeping me. Honestly, I've been worried about you. If you ever want to talk about anything, just say so. I'll make time. I've been avoiding people for most of my life, so I'm not the best at speaking. I know it's hard. You've been through a lot. But it's worth the extra effort to talk to your friends. I make everyone uncomfortable. I just don't know how to carry on a conversation. Hey, we're having one right now. And I'm telling you, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm actually really happy. So don't worry about me. And it's okay to be quiet sometimes, but try to find a middle ground at least. Otherwise, you'll never get any better. Oh. As far as what to talk about, anything's good. Hobbies, things you like, a dream you had last night. Really, anything. Okay, then. I, um, I like this flower. I think it's nice. I think so, too. Did you know that where I come from, those have a completely different color? Oh, really? I'd like to see that. Great! Come visit my village someday. In fact, we should invite all of our friends. It'll be fun! Oh, yes! That would be very exciting! P Professor Henneman? You wanted to speak with me? Miss Marianne, hello. Uh, do pardon the mess. Uh, please have a seat. Of course. I have been puzzling over why your father would wish to conceal your crest. And I have arrived at a conclusion. Would you like to hear it? No, I... I would rather not. Ah, fair enough. Then I will keep it to myself. However, if my theory is correct, well, then it is only natural for you and your father to try keeping your crest a secret. That said, I feel I would be remiss if I didn't point out that I consider this decision a most grievous error. I'm not sure what you mean. Crests never manifest in someone unfit to bear them. Which means, Miss Marianne, you have the ability to make the most of your crest, because it is, by definition, your crest. I have no desire to make use of my crest. But it can be of service to you, and I would venture to suggest to the world at large. Ever since I was born, that crest has been nothing but a burden to me. My parents, too. Ah, that's right. I have heard that you were adopted. Did one of your birth parents also have that crest? Uh, yes, it was my father. Then that crest is evidence that you are your true father's daughter. Concealing it, hiding that truth from the world, is denying your true parentage, is it not? I don't... I'm not suggesting you flaunt your crest. That would be highly unnecessary. Possibly even dangerous. I simply wish you to accept who you are. Accept it? Accept the crest and allow its power to come forward. Then it will open itself to you. Whatever the crest may be, whatever its origin or its nature, it can serve you. It is yours to command, however you wish. Mine? Nobody can decide how to use your crest, Miss Marianne. That choice is yours alone. I will... Um, I will think about that. Hey, Alois. Tell me another story about Captain Gerald, will you? I've told you so many. I don't have an endless supply, you know. There is one that comes to mind, however. That time the captain nearly killed me. What? 
What did you do? Now, it wasn't that I had done anything wrong. That wouldn't be much of a story, would it? No. We were at an inn, making merry. Suddenly, the other guests began to gather around the captain. They wanted him to put on a show, to entertain them with his skills. Oh, I get it. They figured his aim would be great even while drunk. <laughs> That's right. He had a hatchet, and they asked him to hit targets with it. A hatchet, huh? I guess a dagger would be too easy. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> then the captain tells me, put this apple on your head and stand over there. Ah, so he could knock it right off, huh? <laughs> that was the idea, but the hatchet fell short of my head, nearly striking me square in the chest. If I hadn't gotten out of the way, that inn would have been my grave. <laughs> I knew it. That's our captain, so clumsy sometimes. <laughs> True. Injuries take their toll on a man's dexterity. Oh, so that's why? I just remember him saying his hands were no good for finesse. Now, regardless, a master swordsman, that Captain Gerald. Even with the hatchet, now that I think of it. I never saw him miss in the training yard. Really? Seems unlike him to miss that apple, then. Yes, that just dawned on me. Throwing that hatchet, he shouldn't have missed so badly. But... Do you think maybe he was secretly angry with you? I'm not sure. What if the captain was, in fact, trying to kill me? Ha! <laughs> no way. He must have known you would dodge the throw in time. Horsing around at the inn, deadly serious on the battlefield. Sounds just like him, doesn't it? Yes. Certainly an eccentric man. Sometimes, Leone, you quite remind me of him. I heard what you did. I'm disappointed, Leone. Um, hi, Shamir. What have you heard exactly? You aimed your bow at a group of students passing through the monastery. Was this your idiotic idea of training? I told you to be cautious. I'm sorry. Idiotic's a bit harsh, though, isn't it? What were you planning on doing after you took aim? Shooting passers-by? <sighs> of course not. If you want to train, choose a target you can actually shoot. I know. Everyone was pretty mad. I really am sorry. Nobody's happy to have a bow pointed at them. My mentor used to do that kind of thing a lot. Mentor? Was that Geralt? I don't know much about him. Would he really do that? Would and did. Mostly when he was drunk, though. Not a good habit to emulate. From now on, only aim at bugs, like I showed you. But, um, I don't really like bugs. You don't like bugs? That should make you want to aim at them even more. I just can't look at them. Seeing all the extra legs and things, ugh, makes my skin crawl. Then just draw some spiders and hang them on the walls. Aim at the drawings whenever you pass one. Overcome your fear of bugs while you train. You want me to draw spiders? Ew, no! Would that even help? Yes, I should know. Huh? You were scared of them too? I was, but they don't bother me anymore. Okay, you've talked me into it. I'll give it a try. And don't hang them where other people might pass. <laughs> got it, got it. Learn my lesson. Promise. I'm choosing to believe that. Thank <laughs> you. 